at 13 years old, and my parents had a hotel and a restaurant, I decided that I wasn't going to wash dishes. If they were going to be round, they had to be wheels. And they supported me. They gave me their 1925 Buick. So I went to the hardware store, got some house paint, painted some scallops and the fenders, went to the Woolworth store, put some foxtails. Also, I went to the kitchen store, got some pots and pans, made some hubcaps. And then I went to my mom's cabinet and I took the little uh, gold knobs off the cabinets and I put it in the grill. Well, naturally, I was at school I was known as the king of the customizers. Well, when I got home, poor mom, she couldn't get in the cabinets. So I guess I got grounded again. You were called the king of the customizers back then? Way, way, way back in those period of time. When I started in that period, then I went going to school, I started doing customizing. And being a Greek, I took the word customs with a C and I put it with a K for customs. My first car was a little 32 Ford, put some cat eye tail lights in it, made $10. That was terrific. I said, oh, I was going to make all kinds of money. So my first shop was my girlfriend I was going to school with. Now, we lived out in the ranch and in a farm, and she had a barn with a family. So I had a couple of cars I was working on in there, and I was learning. I was welding on the back panel. My buddies come up to me and they say, George, that's a gas tank. Fire, that'll blow. I said, ah. I went, got a garden hose, put it into the tank. The tank went all over the ground. Of course, this was in a barn. There was all dirt and everything. So I started to light the torch again. My buddies come up and say, George, you know, uh, that stays on water, you know, it doesn't just evaporate. Ah, took out a match. Ooh! Burnt down the barn, burnt down the cars. Uh, but the worst of it is, I also lost my girlfriend. <laughs> so I give you a little history of some of the things that I started with. What was your first famous car? Well, first ones went in a period of great, uh, well, being a legend of the 50s, that means I started the trends of hot rods and custom cars. And then chopping of Fords and Mercury's. The first one was a, a 3940 Mercury. I changed the windows, which several years later, General Motors copied the windows because we got rid of the top looking and we added moldings. So that started the Bel Air for Chevrolet. And then for men, it came to where I had the a la carte, was the first Grand National Roadster winner. Two years in a row, I won the Grand National, what we call the AMBR, six times now, the only person that has that award. Then came the Mercury Chops, the Hirohata Mercury, then the Bagallery Mercury, and then the Plymouth, then the Chryslers, and all the different cars. So it was, it was a venture which that grew tremendously. So the legends of the 50s, as a young kid, I used to race on the street. You know, my heart rise, and the Jeep, the police would chase us and then, but that's what started everything in the film industry. Because, boom, from the 40s to the 50s, which we were doing big big screen, but then come the 60s. And what do you have? The little screen in everybody's home all over the world. That means TV. And what do I start out with? Beverly Hillbillies, then the Monsters, then the Batman, and then the Monkeys, and then the Green Hornets, and then the Knight Riders, and then the Dukes of Hazards. And that, of course, got me to be known by many, many, many people worldwide. And that still goes for today, from the legends of the 50s that grew to being the legends of the movie and TV cars to where we are today. We're in the years 2000. So we're not choppy Mercury's and we're not sectioning shoe boxes, as we say. I am now customizing brand new automobiles, the years 2000. I mean, hybrids, electric and gas cars. Also, different kinds of, of Mustangs made into pickups. Even a, a hybrid made into a four-door station wagon. But there were vertical doors. They all came up this way. They didn't go out. And then into today, where I'm doing the new Camaro Spirit. Very unique car. But I've kind of learned one thing, that in doing all of this type of work, I found out I have something that I have to do that's important. That means whatever I create, it's got to be affordable. We're in the economy stage now. We're not building uh, $500,000 cars. We're building cars people can afford and design them. So from the, the Camaro and the Spirit, I made it affordable. But then I did another thing. I made it all made in USA. I'm trying to keep all of our people in our country. 
being in Canada, when I do Canada, I do the Canadian cards, and we use Canadian. So it gives you a little bit of an idea of what customizing has grown in my world and why they call me the king of the customizers, spelled with a K, and I'm fortunate to be one of the young people that have been. But now it's important because my company is a family-run company. My daughter, she runs the company. My son does all the computer graphics. And everything. We're in a world of electronics. I don't even know anything about computers and, and, and digitals and websites and all that. But my son, boom, 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 he gets it. Now my grandson, he's now become 19 years old and he wants to get into it. He photographed a Peterbilt truck in the front. He took this photograph and he put it in the computer. And he took it and he shrunk it down to match a 29 Ford hot rod. Now in my days, I couldn't do that. But here's my grandson today going into the world of Teutonics and the uh, electronic world. He's taken it, put it in the computer, and he's going to make his little hot rod for himself. Still customizing. Yeah, still <laughs> customizing. So he's going to be called probably the mini king of the customizing. <laughs>